Hello, beautiful beings. So I recorded a video last night and I posted it or uploaded it. But when I when I feel compelled to record a video, like I just just now felt felt compelled to record a video, so I am. I don't know really what I'm going to talk about. And that has taken a lot of practice to let that process happen. Anyway, so then I watch my videos when I'm done recording and it is amazing how loud my mind gets. It's definitely not as loud as it was a couple of years ago when I started this this uh, recording these videos. It used to, I used to be, be still so ancients. It's funny, I've noticed when I sit down to record a video the because the ancients well they're always here but it's like they are they're coming through with me we're coming through together and the energy the amount of energy in my body changes there's so much energy coming through me that I find you know I, I'm stumbling over my words so as so when I first started making videos I was so identified with the thoughts that were coming in, all the reasons why I should not be posting, don't upload that video, and I'd be like, oh my gosh, that is, that's so bad, I'm not going to upload that. And I know that a lot of people edit theirs, I don't know how to do that, so <laughs> I just I just upload what I record. <laughs> Anyway, so I've watched the process over the last couple years, and the, even the one that I listened to last night, I go through it every time, but it's definitely to where I'm witnessing those thoughts that are trying to get me to delete the video. And the thoughts that come in that I used to act on, they are mostly about my physical appearance. Last night, the lighting was so... Uh, such to where there was shadows on my face and it made my bottom lip stick out more and I used to get teased like I, people would say that it looked like I was chewing Copenhagen you know just absolute nonsense anyway so thoughts like that still come in but I'm just like no absolutely not it's about what I'm saying it's about you know, hopefully reaching somebody that is, well, the divine does that. The divine sends really desperate people what they need when they need it. Anyway, so that's what my videos are about, is hopefully helping somebody that is trapped in their minds today. And it's always today, so. So I did not, oh, and I was even like waving my hand around a whole bunch, and that was the first reason I wanted to, what, after I was watching it, I was just like, wow, that's so annoying. That's so annoying. I don't ever want to be an annoyance, but it's kind of human nature to look at each other and automatically start judging. And you can say you don't, but I bet if you really start paying attention to it, you'll see that it's really automatic. And it's not a blame thing. It's not even a fault thing. It's just something that happens to us. It's that they're saying it's that separation that feels like it, it happens over, you know, over time. So even watching Eckhart and Muji and, you know, uh, Esther Hicks, Papa G, people that I admire so much, I've had my times to where you know, I'm just judging them really harshly and, and feel like they're really annoying at times. They're, the ancients are saying that those were definitely during those times where I was shedding the useless personal identity and it was over my eyes. And I was still watching and listening to, you know, Eckhart and Muji. I was still watching them just as much because you get kind of a feel for where you're at in these uh, these processes, in these ascension processes. Seems like there's there's many, 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 and I would keep watching Eckhart or Muji because I knew it was going to help me through whatever I was going through or whatever was going through me. But I would still feel really annoyed with them at times, and it didn't take very long to notice that to to put together to correlate annoyance with them as, oh, I've become unconscious again. 
because from a personal um, standpoint, the personal identity does not want to feel like it doesn't exist. It doesn't. It rebels against it, even though it has no life except for the attention I give to it. It's just also how it's fascinating, isn't it? Just fascinating. So my point is, I just never want to do anything that is really annoying because anybody, even at their best, uh, the human mind can perceive something they do, how they laugh, you know, whatever, as an annoyance and, and, and keep them from actually listening to something that could completely shift their perception and change their whole reality on the planet. That is how, that is how tricky the mind is and how paying attention to it and identifying with it can really keep us from, you know, being, being, from being present, from being in our natural state, which is right here in the moment. You know, there was another definition of satsang that I had written down that I found the other day that Papa G said, what is it? I'll go get it if I can't remember it. Oh, Sot song is bringing the bringing the mind back to its source. That's all. That's why it's just about having a conversation. That's why it's about that's why it's about being asked questions and having this answer bloom bloom forth. That's sot song. The, this process that takes place when when I get to work with people, it's so beautiful. I don't I don't ever know how how long we will be um, interacting when they come into my experience, needing help with something. It could be a month. It could be a few days. It could be one conversation. I never know. My person, um, and and I am still a person. You know, I'm not. I am. I am life force coming through this physical form. We all are, but, but I am a person. I'm having this human experience. And, and so, and I still, so I still have a desire to, to have very close lasting, long lasting. I, for some reason, I've just always had this deep desire to have life long lasting friendships and bonds. I, I don't get tired of being friends with somebody. I, I don't. I thrive on it. I absolutely love feeding um, feeding relationships with love and caring. So through through being able to help people, you know, as Muji and Eckhart have told me over the years, it's a very, very, very gradual process uh, having people come into my experience that specifically that I will be able I get to help through through channeling information. Very gradual. So people have come into my experience and and we are so close and just doing this absolutely life-giving work together. Life-giving for both of us. And then and then they're gone. When the it feels like the resolution has come, the oh my gosh, that's right. I mean, just one realization after another. Weeks go by, and then I can see that they're starting to phase out. That 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 specific specific um, experience is is closing. And I used to cling to it and try to make it stay and, and I would grieve it and I'd be like, why can't I keep a friend? And I would always hear Papa G. He was saying once, I don't need friends. I don't need friends in the way that I've always felt like I needed them. And so, you know, I've, I've learned because if it's a friendship, friendship, there has to be a certain amount of back and forth. It can't just be one person feeding it with love, you know, giving it attention. It can't be. When one person removes themselves from it, I'm not saying for a day or whatever, you know, that's, that's natural. But you know what I mean, when you feel a person leaving your experience, it can be very tempting. Well, I used to leave claw marks on everybody. I didn't want anybody to leave me because I was, I needed them. I needed them. I was using them as like flotation devices, as survival 
<laughs> devices. I see that now. I don't, I don't do that now, obviously. So it's just, it feels like a grieving process. Certain ways that I used to be that I've been letting go of, um, it just feels kind of sad to let that go. But, but, but in the letting go of the, like the, the feeling that I don't want to let a certain person go in my life when I see her, her kind of, you know, just naturally phasing out. I don't actually want to hold on to the feeling that it needs to be a certain way because when I do, that just brings more grieving. It just brings sadness and longing and an unhealthy attachment. So the divine is teaching me how to love with an open hand. And, you know, and, and I, and these people that I've had such beautiful interactions with, they come, they, they come back into my life more often than not too. So it's beautiful. All this is very beautiful. It can be, feel ex, ex, excruciatingly painful, the growing pains of it. But, you know, I'm here to tell you that always on the, on the other side, it's, it's more clarity. It's, it's more, more of a, a secure feeling of, well, secure, just feeling secure in, in just what is, you know, instead of the projections of my mind, how, how I always felt like I needed things to be. I really feel like that's it for now. I don't know if I mentioned this. Yeah, I did about moving my hand around in my last video. Um, yeah, I did. Okay. About the whole annoyance thing. Right, right. Saw a song with Mama G at gmail.com. Bringing the mind back to its source. That saw song. Love you so much.